Hey everyone, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today I'm going to be doing my first kind of little blog post, but it's going to be really informative and I'm just going to show you guys what I'm doing today in the yard, what are the projects I'm working on right now, and yeah, I just wanted to uh, update you guys on what's going on with my channel. So if you've noticed, most of my videos are old. Um, it's footage from the past, uh, either of me building this place or working on a certain project, um, and that's just because I filmed on this site since the beginning and that's been about a year and a half now and so I've been uh, filming everything that I'm doing so that I can edit it later and then put it out there to show everybody how I, how I created everything. I'm just realizing that I'm putting out newer videos and older videos and it might be a little confusing to people as to what's going on, what's the real timeline. Today's February 6, 2018, I believe, it's Monday. So what you'll see um, is you know older videos and newer videos coming out. I'll, I'll be sure to put the dates on everything. I'm trying to edit at least one, if not multiple videos every week so that I can get out all my old stuff and then start producing new content because of course as I'm you know I'm shooting more and more videos, I'm getting better at shooting and coming up with concepts for videos and just speaking on the videos in general, editing, all those things, I'm getting better at those. So you know I hope to be able to produce better and better content for everyone and just better videos. So without any other further ado, why am I sitting here? Next to, what is this? It's charcoal. And I actually made this by make, burning a fire. So biochar is one of my more recent projects that I'm working on. So biochar, it's charcoal, uh, but it's charcoal that you bury under the ground. And this was discovered in South America and they discovered that their soil was super depleted but and there's, there's certain areas where they had obviously done agriculture and in those areas they found a lot of charcoal and a lot more organic matter. So they, this was studied um, and biochar has been studied quite a bit and ultimately what they discovered is that charcoal is an incredibly valuable resource. So what charcoal is, so in about a gram, this is you know about a gram, they, they say it's about the size of an eraser. In this gram itself, there's 9,000 square feet of surface area in all of the pores and everything. So what that essentially is, is a gigantic hotel or home for uh, bacteria, just microflora. It also can store nutrients and water in these pores. So one advantage to having biochar is that you don't have to fertilize or add nutrients as often because so much of it is stored in the biochar itself. So what people do is they make the char, they blend it up with a wood chipper or something like that to get it fine, then they'll mix it into a potting mix in anywhere from 2%, 5%, up to the like a maximum I've seen of 10%. So I, what I wanna do with this really is I wanna use my own compost and biochar as my soil mix and nothing else. I don't wanna have to buy perlite or vermiculite or, any of, or peat moss or any of that other stuff in the future. So that's my goal, is to try to have my own potting mix just from my compost and just from biochar, because the biochar adds a little bit of aeration. It should work well, I believe, at least for most things. So I'm excited to give it a try. So, you know, I'm looking at different kiln designs and how to build it. But anyways, I made this at home, actually. This is charcoal, see how it breaks apart? I can write with it. It's fully burnt all the way through. There's no brown or unburnt wood. Like I actually did make some charcoal, but you know, it's gonna be very inefficient in this little fire pit. So to make, uh, to make biochar, how did I do this? I'm gonna show you guys. We're gonna start the fire and then I'm gonna go and work on some other stuff and show you guys what I'm working on. So to make biochar, you basically just make an inverted fire. So instead of putting all the small twigs and little things and the bigger things on top, you flip that over have the big, heavier stuff on the bottom, and then go medium to light to the top. And the reason that you're doing that is because you're trying to create a fire, uh, basically it doesn't have oxygen down in the center, but the massive amount of heat causes all the gases and everything to be burned off so that all you're left with is charcoal, or pure, basically carbon. Sorry for any biochar experts out there if I didn't explain that completely correctly, but still learning about it. So there's a lot of other benefits to biochar. Okay, you can filter water with this. Charcoal is actually 90% of gunpowder. It can be used um, as an animal feed supplement or for humans as well. It's a very cleansing agent. It can help get rid of parasites and other things. There's countless uses for biochar, but essentially I just want to use it for the soil. Um, 
conditioning reasons and really see if it, if it, how well it works. In my permaculture design course, we made biochar and we did it in a big pit. And in the pit, you're supposed to have a 30 degree angle all around and that helps create that vortex of air so that you're burning off all the volatile gases. It's called pyrolysis, I think. Is what the, if you're looking for the scientific name of what we're actually doing, if you want to look that up. I knew keeping all of these chicken feed bags would come in handy someday, so I'm gonna store some biochar in. And in the bottom here, there's some ash, so I don't really want to get a lot of the ash. Now, this isn't an efficient biochar kiln, so it's gonna have some ash in there, that's okay. But with the ash is um, very alkaline, so you don't want to get a lot of that in your soil because you don't want to tip the balance of your soil. So the next thing with this biochar is I need to charge it. Charging is when you add a bunch of beneficial microbes. So I'm actually gonna soak it in some warm tea for a few days. But people will charge biochar up to like a month in a solution. But I think that a typical time is about a week in whatever type of tea or slurry you wanna make to inoculate the biochar. And we're just inoculating with beneficial bacteria, microbes, and nutrients. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is put all these sticks and twigs. I've got all the paper here to get a higher heat and to catch these lighter pieces of wood on fire, and then it's just gonna burn down. We'll see what happens. So it's gonna smoke at first, especially with these twigs and leaves, but once the fire's going, and if it's burning correctly, the smoke will actually burn without any white smoke, and that's because the gases are being just completely burned up. So here we go. No lighter fluid, no nothing. Let's see if it works. It's probably hard to see on the camera, but this fire barely has any smoke. The only smoke I'm, I'm really seeing is from leaves, or it's just steam coming out of the wood. So this, this burn looks pretty good, actually, for a little campfire. There you can see a little bit more smoke. Well, that's some of that lighter wood on top, ashing, ashing and becoming smoke there. All right, guys, so the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is winter tomatoes. So here in San Diego, um, we're kind of able to grow tomatoes almost year round, depending on where you live. I've basically received no chill hours this year in my yard and no frost at all. So this has survived. But you know, it's been planted since like May of last year. So it is an old plant. It's very susceptible to disease. It's getting attacked right now. You know, you can see it getting attacked. See, it's getting attacked by aphids and other bugs. And ultimately though, um, I need to take this down today because I don't want it to spread any disease or any problems to my brand new tomato starts that are right over here. So here I've got all of my tomatoes, cucumbers, and zucchini squash for the season, at least the first part of the season. It's almost 300 plants right here. Um, seven of my beds are gonna be dedicated to summer stuff and then the rest I just purchased shade cloth last night and like a pipe bender so and I'm gonna be getting some electrical conduit I'm gonna be making poly low tunnels that I can use uh, with my agrabon frost blanket or I can use shade cloth because I want to try to grow greens year-round here in Lemon Grove and I'm gonna need shade cloth to do that. So we'll see how that all works. All right, so I gotta, unfortunately, gotta take these San Marzanos out. I'm gonna take out the best tomatoes that I can, then I'll feed the rest of my chickens, and they'll compost it and eat it for me. I've got a fresh batch of um, worm tea going right now, so tonight will be 48 hours, so I'm gonna spray this tonight. I've got lots of, um, because of the high heat right now, we've got lots of aphid problems. I wanna come in, I'm gonna spray off the aphids and get some extra nutrients into the soil and into my plants so that they're a bit healthier and can uh, hold off those aphids for a bit longer. Because I just need my kale and chard and collard greens, I just need that to survive, you know, another month to six weeks before I can get my summer crops in there. And I'm gonna be starting new kale, chard, and everything seedlings that I can start, and then those will be planted under the shade cloth, and that'll be an experiment to see how long those will go into the summer under shade. So I'm really excited to try growing greens during the summer because it's something I've, I've never done, never been able to because I've never tried using shade cloth before. So it'll be fun to kind of use that technology and, and see what's possible with it. I'm just really excited about all of my propagations I did this year. I'm in the California Rare Fruit Growers Club and 
I, it's an awesome club. I've learned so much about trees, grafting, propagating. And this year we, at our Scion Exchange, we exchange, um, what we do is we exchange cuttings. So these are grapes, small concords. These are all amazing grapes um, that grow really well here in San Diego from a local expert. I've got figs, um, pomegranates, some blackberries here. These are the cactus looking things are called dragon fruit. It's a subtropical fruit. It's really pretty and very delicious. More pomegranates, mulberry, pomegranates. And then I also have a ton of comfrey sprouted here. So that comfrey is gonna be one of my fertilizer sources. And it also helps me to make my compost hotter. And there's a lot of benefits to comfrey that I've talked about in a bunch of my videos. So check those out. So I've got my tables here and then underneath I have my old garden bed and I kept that there. So what I'm gonna put here is I'm gonna plant a bunch of comfrey right here. And this will just be kind of a little, a little comfrey farm for me so that whenever I wanna feed it to my chickens, make comfrey tea, uh, make compost using the comfrey as a main nitrogen source. Then I'll just pull it from right here. And then I'm gonna make a couple others. I planted comfrey in a few other spots along the fence line too. And that's gonna provide a lot of good comfrey that I can use for so many different uh, things. So I guess the last thing I'm kind of excited about, I, I've used a lot of different 1020 trays um, and I've tried with holes, without holes, and I finally have a, I think a, a decent opinion on kind of the best ones out there. And so for me, what I found is these are from Bootstrap Farmer. And they're a farm supply company that started in the last two or three years, I think. And they're awesome. Everything that they provide is super high quality. So this is a 1020 tray. A normal 1020, you could not do this, right? Just for reference, here's a plug tray that's made out of the same material. See how flimsy that is. Here's an actual regular 1020. See how it's bent? That's so they come like that. They're already super weak and crappy. After one season, they start getting cracks and problems. So you have to throw them away after one or two seasons, and that's horrible. It's a waste of money in the plastic. So these are awesome. It does not bend. I can actually fit this whole squash on here. Okay, what 1020 tray could you do with this? This is ridiculous. I'm oh one-handed. So yeah, very strong. So anyways, with this Bootstrap Farmer 1020 tray, I'm not sponsored by them, by the way, um, but I do have a link in my description if you guys want to purchase any of these. You can purchase them through Amazon or go through their website directly. But if you do purchase on Amazon, I get a small little commission, so that helps me out. Um, and I really appreciate that. And yeah, guys, anything I ever put a link to or recommend or talk, any tools I talk about, it's only something that I've personally used and it's only something that I would personally recommend. I will never promote or talk about a product that isn't good. And if it's bad, believe me, I will bring it up and I will talk crap about it endlessly. Uh, these ones don't have holes. And so here's my strategy. So in summer, we need a lot more water, right? So what I wanna do is get my seedlings to sprout. These were just planted. Once they've germinated and come out of the ground, then what I wanna do is just bottom water. So I'll just lift up a tray and I'll put a bunch of water into this tray which cannot drain. And then the plants will have water to drink from the bottom and they may drink the water up all day. So that will prevent me from having to water as much. It'll keep the plants alive. Sometimes you miss a watering and then, you know, a few of the plug cells dry out and you're, you know, you lost a couple plants. So that's no good. So in the summer, that's why I'm switching to this where I don't, I don't actually use drains and I'm gonna bottom water so that I'm ensuring they have constant water the whole time. Because in summer, it's really hard to get things too wet. It's easy to dry them out. Uh, but in winter, it's very easy to get things too wet or they won't dry out or you get multiple rains. So in winter, I'm going to be using ones that have holes. So I can use, I'll use my same system that I'm doing right now with, I still need to use up all these 1020s that have holes and, um, or I've got trays like this that are just holder trays, but they drain really well. So in winter, draining trays. In summer, solid trays so that I just soak up the water. So that's my new strategy for summer, and I, I'm excited to try it. I just got 25 of these from Bootstrap, and I got them on Amazon. It was 100 bucks for 25 of these, which is a really great deal because these are not going to break, or you know, these are lasting at least five years for sure. So, anyways, guys, check out the link in the, the description, and you can go check out their stuff and go check out their website too because they just got tons of good, great things. I just got some clamps for my 
poly low tunnels and I got my pipe bender from them for my poly low tunnels. So yeah, go check them out, Bootstrap Farmer. All right, so so far so good. The fire's starting at the top and it's working its way down. And we're just gonna leave it like that. And we'll see what we're left with at the end. Right, that's it. This is basically all charcoal. There's a lot of ash in here. There's a hole in the bottom, so I'm gonna um, I need to cool this off right now and stop it from burning. And then I'm gonna wash away a lot of this ash because it's gonna fall at the bottom. All right, so here's the finished product. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So yeah, even these big chunks totally went to charcoal. Awesome. So one way that you know that you did make actually make charcoal is when you break it apart, it'll be, I can't make a sound, but if you drop it all on the ground, it'll kind of sound almost like glass. It's made pretty good charcoal. So now what I need to do is, I'm just gonna put it in a bag, stamp on it, get it really small, then I'll charge it by leaving it in my worm tea. I'll probably leave it in for like a week or so. And then I can use this to put into my potting soil or inoculate one of my beds. So yeah, as I learn more about biochar, I'll be sure to talk about it more. And once I make my kiln and start making this officially, then I'll be able to provide a lot more details about how to make it and everything. This is just to show you guys, you know, what's possible. And you can make it in your backyard in just like a fire pit like this. We started with a big pile of wood and we're only left with this. So it's not very efficient, but you can actually make charcoal in your backyard. So that's pretty fun. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my first vlog. Be sure to let me know if there's other things that you'd want to see in my vlogs and different things you'd like me to talk about. This is just more unofficial, just, you know, random thoughts or just want to show you, you know, recent things that I'm working on right now just so you guys can, can see what I'm doing. I'll be continuing to release all of my older videos. Um, my plan is to do the final build on my market garden, how I made my beds, how I set up the irrigation, uh, and all those things are coming up real soon here. So stay tuned, and uh, anyways guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Please uh, like and share these videos with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe.